What is going on everybody? It's Tuesday, January 15. Welcome back to Foxy Games UK. I'm Fox, your source of reliable video game news and rumour. No time to waste getting into today's video. So the amount may be peanuts to a huge corporation like Sony, but the PlayStation division of the company has been fined 2 million euros by the Antitrust Committee. Among reasons for the fine, the somewhat non-existent information on PlayStation 4 packaging informing would-be consumers they will be required to pay a premium to access the online portion of a game, and the related costs incurred to the consumer. Sony being fined for 2 million euros by the Italian Antitrust for unfair business practice related to the sale of the PlayStation 4 is unlikely to make a dent in the company's finances, but at least the penalty sets the right tone for others to follow. Now, specifically, the packaging missing critical information for the customers and the fact that the online multiplayer sessions are only available after subscribing to PlayStation Plus. Now, some of you are probably thinking right about now, who doesn't know by now that it costs to play a majority of multiplayer games online? Who doesn't know that? Well, that's because you assume people are as plugged into the game scene as you are. And it is a rather selfish way of thinking that just because you happen to know something, or something that is generally widely known, that everybody ought to know that. Well, think of mum or pup, who are quite ignorant in purchasing young adults a gaming device, and unknown to them, and after purchase they realise they need to be connected online for one, and even if they are, they may live out in the sticks somewhere, rural or country to our esteemed American audience. So, not everybody has the luxury of reliable, fast internet, and even those who do have a usage cap in many cases. For some, this cap could be as low as 10 gigabytes of data in the UK, and I'm sure you'll agree, ladies and gentlemen, a rather paltry amount, all things considered. So, the parent or guardian pays the initial upfront costs, only to discover, nobody told me this, and nobody told me that, and I can almost hear the soothing tone of R&B singer Erica Badu. Didn't you know? Didn't you know? There is an extra $60 per year to pay. Oh, you didn't know? Perhaps we ought to put that small yet rather important detail on the packaging then. Perhaps you should, Sony, and now they'll have to, and rightly so. Now in other news. Now in what could be one of the most ridiculously named PlayStation enthusiast sites I have ever seen, I give you PlayStationing. Yes, that's the name, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, the font design used is even worse than the name, but that's not the reason for this particular segment. There's something even more ridiculous at play here, and the barely an article headline reads, Will PlayStation 5 be five times more powerful than Xbox One X using AMD's Radeon 7 7 nanometer GPU? But uh, at least let's attempt to unpack the seemingly unpackable and verbatim. Now, PS4 Slim and Xbox both use AMD 16 nanometer GPUs, and it wouldn't be a, a great stretch to presume the next generation will also be on AMD hardware. Really? Well, at CES 2019, AMD announced their latest Radeon 7 series that boasts some impressive specs, and it got me thinking, will this be what the console manufacturers use in their next generation consoles? Stop. So the writer of this opinion piece believes Sony or Microsoft can offer consumers an uncompromised 60 compute units with a maximum speed of 1.8 gigahertz, 16 gigabyte of fast GDDR6, really ultra fast RAM, and with a whopping one terabyte per second memory bandwidth. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. So soon after lunchtime, good grief, I'm almost tempted to engage in impromptu ridicule, but I'm not nearly that cruel. So, all of the above translates into a simpler floating operation, that's flops. Number of approximately 27,000 gigaflops, exclamation mark. To put this into perspective, the most powerful console on the market, the Xbox One X's GPU, churns out an impressive 6,000 G-flops at the top end, really. The cards currently have about 2.5 times more than that. So, 
At the time of the PS4 release, the graphics cards on PCs were substantially stronger, but this came at a premium, so does this then mean that the same 7 nanometer architecture could be used on a console but a stripped down version? Now, the biggest advantage is power consumption and therefore heat is reduced. Thankfully, we all avoided the red rings of death this generation, so it could be an option. Now, without taking the CPU and memory into account, could the next gen consoles be four to five times more powerful? Than on the Xbox One X? Hmm, questions, questions, so many questions. My goodness, what planet are these people actually living on? Most are expecting and will not pay much over $400 for a console. And Sony knows this all too well. I mean, it seems to me there are people who want a five-star hotel room, but for two-star prices, not going to happen. Look, here's my thing. Sometimes I, I come across these odd rather unqualified comments in that, and I'm being as kind and gracious as I can, they don't know a whole lot about anything at all. So these people often come out with these comments, no way PlayStation 5 is even close to three times the power of PS4 Pro, or seven times the power of PS4. Hmm. And even though it remains a rumour, at least until officially announced by Sony, obviously, I don't see how anyone could have such a hard time processing, a hard time even imagining the PS5 is allegedly six to seven times more powerful than a regular 1.8 T-flop PS4. Don't these people know PS4 Pro is at least 2.3 times the power of the standard PS4? And that's just a mid-gen upgrade, not even a whole new generation of hardware. Now look, I'm all for freedom of expression, but that freedom comes with a price for all those who abuse it or deliberately misuse it, and that price should be, and often is, ridicule. Though I'll certainly be interested in what the sensible among you think about this in the comments. And in our final news segment. Video game industry multi-platform publishing giant Activision Blizzard welcomes its new CFO with a whopping $15 million handshake and after telling Blizzard staff to cut costs. Hmm. Well, less than a month after it was reported that Activision had told Blizzard to cut costs, it is paying its new chief financial officer a signing bonus worth 15 million US dollars, distributed as 3.75 million in cash and 11.3 million in restricted stock tied to performance targets, according to Bloomberg. That's on top of a $900,000 per year salary. Well, <laughs> the lucky recipient is Dennis Durking, who previously served as Activision Blizzard's CFO for five years until May 2017, and Durkin replaces Spencer Newman, who is taking the same job over at Netflix. His contract at Activision barred him from speaking to other potential employees, as they often do, so he was fired as soon as the news became public. Maybe at the highest echelons of the corporate world, these kinds of inducements are actually necessary to attract and retain top talent, but they do stick in the craw a little when, according to reports from both Kotaku and Eurogamer, Activision told the Blizzard side of the business to cut costs and cut fast, release more games, and was even paying employees to leave in a voluntary severance scheme. The past few months have been pretty turbulent for Activision, a number of senior execs have already left, and in handing publishing control of Destiny back to Bungie, it effectively abandoned one of its highest profile IPs. Activision stock dropped 7% after the news, worsening a downward trend that was accelerated by the Diablo Immortal reveal at BlizzCon last year, but which first set in about a month prior to that, really, and uh, given the thin state of Activision's release calendar, it's difficult to see any immediate prospect of it turning things around. Yes, Sekiro is likely to be good, given director Hidetaki Miyazaki's form, but uh, it's unlikely to be a money spinner of the kind Destiny was hoped to be. How absolutely, utterly disgusting and deplorable of Activision, especially in light of the demands to cut costs at Blizzard, which inevitably transpires into a mass job, well, a series of losses, pay cuts, and perhaps shared hours between employees. It's malevolent to worse and incredibly amoral at best. And for the sake of one individual, and no matter how much he thinks he's worth, that's a very inexpensive way to treat the majority of your staff, Activision Blizzard. Very inexpensive, as in very cheap. Though, as usual, I'm sure you'll have your say 
in the comments. And for all your current and next gen news updates, rumor and rampant speculation, hit the like button, spread the word and keep it locked to Foxy Games UK. Not least because you're all very respectable people, unlike Activision Blizzard. Remember, relevant links where applicable can be found in this video's description. And while you're there, share your thoughts and opinions on today's news because that unfortunately brings us to the end of another video. But let's continue the discussion in the comments and subscribe to Foxy Games UK. Why not? Go on, subscribe and remember to hit the notification bell so you never miss content. Thumbs up if you like it here and help us reach more like-minded gamers simply by sharing this video across social media and all other platforms. Consider supporting Foxy Games UK via Patreon and or grab yourself a Foxy Games UK branded t-shirt or hoodie now available in various colours and designs. You'll find both links in this video's description. I really appreciate the support. And that concludes our time together today. It was really great hanging out, and uh, until the next video, always remember, play games, not corporations.